released the trailer for the Normandy map, and we thought we'd do the live stream this week so we can give you a better kind of hands-on look of how the map and the assets pack look for kind of everyday use. So for the uh, live stream today, I'll jump into my trusty Spitfire and fly around the Normandy map, and then we'll look at some of the individual uh, units in the assets pack. So I'll jump into the mission editor so I can load in a mission. So also during the stream, I have about 30 or so questions that were posted on the forum that I'll try to answer. Okay, let's load in a demo mission I created. So now here's a look at the entire map, which measures probably around uh, 93,000 square kilometers. And of course it focuses on the Normandy area and generally uh, late summer, 1944 where we have a lot of the uh, newly established uh, airfield by the Allies uh, after the D-Day landings. And we can switch over to the uh, map view. And this can be uh, particularly helpful when you're placing units based on historical maps. And of course, then we have the uh, satellite view, which is mostly helpful when you're uh, placing uh, units uh, on the map and make sure they're not conflicting with buildings or trees or anything else as part of the map structure. So for this mission, I'm going to start here off the coast and then I'm going to go ahead and fly south to Khan, then head off to the west, then back up north to the coast again. And then I'll follow the coastline out to the west up to uh, Point Du Hoc. And as you can see, we have uh, 30 airfields, both in France and in England. All right then, so let's go ahead and fly this mission. Loading, loading, loading. Okay, here we are. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reset my view and I'll hit fly. And I'm gonna pause for a second and uh, take a look around. And I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my view back a little bit and then up a little bit. Cool, okay, off we go. Now, one of the first things you may notice is that we've uh, updated the water a bit and better reflections. We actually have white caps uh, based on the uh, wind speed and the uh, surface of the water now is much more um, dynamic based on the wind conditions. So the higher the wind speed, the more chop and waves and swells you're gonna have. So the mission I'm flying is in the summer in June, 1944, but we'll also have the options for different seasons, uh, particularly spring, summer, and autumn. We'll have uh, definitely very different looks, uh, but the winter not so much. It'll be more a adaptation of the autumn season. So for the uh, next, uh, 10 or 15 minutes or so, I'll fly around the map. And uh, I printed out uh, many of the questions you guys posted to the forum. And I'll try to answer as many of these I can that I have uh, good answers for. So uh, one of the biggest questions we have is whether or not the uh, modern aircraft of DCS World can operate within this map. And for the most part, yes, unless it's a, a very large uh, aircraft like a B-52 or a, a B-1, which will probably have a lot of difficulty taking off from the runways, most everything else should work you know, pretty fine. Now, you know, given that this map is focused on our World War II uh, set of products, we have really no plans to add TACAN and VORs and things like that at this point. And uh, at least when the map originally ships, um, we don't plan on having the uh, radio navigation for World War II, but hopefully something that we can add on at a later time. Now, on a related matter, there's a lot of questions of whether or not the map could be adapted to modern day. And, you know, except for the trains, which will be uh, set based on the time period, you know, everything else is going to be, a, you know, strictly to 1944 period. And the trains themselves, you know, just like the trains we have in the Caucasus map right now, it's an auto-generated uh, vehicle unit, which it's really no function in the mission editor. It's automatically placed and runs by a schedule. 
Now, in regards to uh, performance, uh, probably the biggest thing the team is working on right now is actually optimization of the game. And you know, as you can see, actually, particularly right now, as we're flying over Khan, um, there's a, a very, very high density of objects compared to you know virtually almost all of our other maps. You know, whether it's the buildings, the trees, um, telegraph lines, what have you. So there's a lot of uh, ongoing work right now in terms of performance optimization, and our goal is to have the optimization uh, such that there's really no performance difference than the other maps. Now, in uh, terms of uh, English cities and ports and such, um, as some of you may be aware, when we originally advertised the Normandy map as part of the Kickstarter campaign, it was strictly just actually a much smaller area of northern France. And it wasn't until only later that we actually added a portion of southern England with several airfields to you know, provide better gameplay. And um, so it's already had quite a bit of feature creep on this. And at this point, it, it, probably for the foreseeable future, it's kind of out of scope to start adding all the cities and ports in radar stations in southern England. It's not to say it, it will never happen, but at least right now it's not in the current plans. So uh, another big question we have, of course, is the uh, functionality of the trees and whether or not they're going to be collidable or not. And yeah, uh, certainly, um, we believe that you know, moving forward with any D new DCS map, having a collision model for the trees is quite important, you know, not just for the aircraft, but even more so uh, for the helicopters and combined arms and things like that. And um, you know, just as I said earlier about modern day units operating in Normandy, uh, personally I find probably the most fun uh, for the Normandy map right now is flying the helicopters in it. Now in terms of the uh, release schedule, we're still looking at you know late April and the map itself is actually pretty near done. Um, the big items that still need to be done are quite a few of the asset units. And what will happen is when we do release it, it'll be part of uh, version 2. We'll actually probably call it 2.1. And then once uh, 2.1 is out with the Normandy map, then we'll refocus a lot of our um, map uh, resources on updating the Caucasus map. And once we have the Caucasus map updated, uh, we improve the explosions. Uh, then we can go ahead and move forward on doing the unified version, which we're you know, right now kind of tentatively calling uh, 2.5. And that will essentially be the great merge in which we unify you know, the different uh, DCS installations into a single one. And something that you, know, you and us are all very much looking forward to. So uh, the next question is, is the map one-to-one -one scale? And yes, it is. Um, you can you know, clearly see this when you place um, you know, kind of known object sizes in the world next to uh, buildings and trees and things of that sort. So yeah, it is definitely one-to-one -one scale. Now, in terms of combined arms, we definitely see combined arms as having a really great place in a map like this, uh, particularly with the World War II vehicles, which are you know, much more uh, simple means of control. It really does. Uh, you know, suits well to this type of environment. But before we can really dive into the com combined arms aspect of it, first we need to actually finish the entire uh, assets pack. And once we get that done, then we can you know, make a better determination of how combined arms will work in this type of map. And um, once we know that, then we'll of course let you guys know. Uh, next is um, about the uh, bomber formations. And a lot of you guys noted the uh, really great uh, model of the B-17 that's going to be part of the assets pack. And a lot of questions about whether or not we'll be able to have a realistic uh, bomber formations, which of course is a you know, very classic element of that. And yeah, we are actually working right now on a new uh, bomber formation AI, which uh, such bombers as you know, the B-17s, the 24s, and the JU-88s will be able to take advantage of. So in terms of expanding the Normandy map, uh, probably not. Um, you know, again, as I mentioned earlier, this map has already seen a, uh, quite a bit of feature creep and expansion already. And there becomes a point we have to you know, say enough is enough and move on to other map projects. Uh, in particular, again, we really need to get back to the Caucasus map so we can do essentially the great merge 
And there's other maps that are waiting in the wings, like the, um, the Strait of Hormuz map. And we have other maps and plans as well. And we need to get started on those at some point. So we can only expand this map so much. Uh, so the next question is regarding uh, new clouds. And the clouds themselves are you know, a very different element than the map itself. It goes into the effects side of our teams, which is a different team than the map team. And the current plan right now is uh, our first priority for our effects is to vastly improve the explosions. But when we do the explosions, there's going to be a lot of technology that we can essentially then use later for the clouds. So once we have the explosions improved, uh, after that we'll really want to start updating the clouds. And that will probably be uh, after 2.5, but we want to have the explosions for 2.5. So the uh, next question is about turning off shadows, particularly, particularly to increase performance. And I know in the internal version right now, actually, you, when you have the uh, settings options for uh, uh, clouds, you have, I believe it's options for default, which is the projected shadows, uh, flat shadows, and then an off setting. And when you set it to off, you can actually turn off all the tree shadows and the building shadows and you know, basically any uh, world object that is projecting a shadow. And that will you know, help in, improve performance for those that need it. Uh, the next question was about creating dugouts and trenches. And the uh, current engine right now is not a uh, deformable terrain, uh, so you really can't do anything like that at this point. Hopefully someday in the future, but not in the, uh, the T4 uh, map engine we're using right now. So the uh, next question was about if structures like uh, buildings and bridges can be destroyed. And yeah, they'll definitely all have uh, damage and destruction models as well. So uh, the next question was uh, if you will need a map for running uh, servers at release. And certainly, uh, anytime you know, anyone is running the map, whether it's a single player, multiplayer, um, whoever is running the map has to have uh, a key for that map. Um, we simply you know, can't provide free keys to everyone who wants to run a multiplayer server. And we also don't want to put ourselves in a situation where we're having to choose favorites of what servers we give keys to and which ones we don't. So if you want to run a Normandy server, then you're going to have to buy the key to do that. The uh, next question was asking about uh, paved surface runways. And kind of as, as I mentioned earlier, um, all the runways are based on 1944 and we really don't have any plans of doing a, uh, a fully modern day version of the map minus uh, the trains based on the date. So, um, but again, as I mentioned, except for maybe some very large aircraft, you know, virtually all of the DCS World aircraft are perfectly capable of operating from the runways in the uh, essentially the 1944 version, which has the uh, steel planking. So the next question was asking if the map will come with uh, aircraft, and the answer is no. Um, you know, all uh, module maps are just the maps themselves, unless they're part of a, you know, a bundle deal. If you want to fly the aircraft, then you'll have to buy those aircraft separately. So I'm over uh, Point du Hoc now, and pretty much near the end of this flight. So now I'm going to go ahead and jump into some of the uh, AI aircraft, and then we'll take a look at some of the uh, ground units. Uh, but uh, before I do that, a little brief announcement in that um, the first campaign uh, for Normandy Map is being built right now by Bunyap and I, and it's going to be a Spitfire campaign, which will focus on the Epsom campaign, um, which kind of took place just west of the Khan area, and we'll have more news on that later. Okay, uh, let's take a look at some of the uh, AI aircraft. So here I have some uh, Spitfire Mark 9s uh, parked on the runway. 
and you can get a better uh, closer look at the uh, airfield detail, the grass, uh, a couple of the new uh, ground units, uh, the truck and the Jeep, uh, the barrels, um, you know, just again, more how it looks at the uh, ground level, which, you know, as you can see, not just for, you know, taxiing around and such, but I think for uh, combined arms, it's going to be a, a, a pretty big advancement from what we have right now. And then we uh, have the uh, 109. And again, showing some of the detail on the runways and a couple of the new uh, German ground units. And of course, the wind socks. Uh, another angle. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the, uh, the B-17 uh, Flying Fortress. And this aircraft will certainly be one of the stars of the uh, World War II Assets Pack with a really high level of detail. And I think as I mentioned earlier before, we also want to do a new uh, AI uh, formation logic which allow it to you know, fly in standard box formations as well as you know, correct uh, bombing logic and such. Uh, but of course, the uh, B-17 will be just one of the aircraft as part of the World War II assets pack. And we really want to focus on aircraft that uh, are most common uh, in Europe uh, over northern France in the summer of 1944. And this includes aircraft like the uh, C-47, uh, the Typhoon, the Falkland 198 and A-8, uh, the BF-109 G-6, uh, the A-20, the B-24, the B-25, the B-26. And of course, there's, there's other aircraft that you know, some have asked about, but they really weren't that common uh, in this location at that time period. Okay, let's take a look at some of the uh, ground units now, both some of the uh, Commonwealth units as well as some of the Axis units. And like the um, Asset Pack aircraft, you know, each of these vehicles can have a very high level of detail, and quite a few of them. Um, we're going to have you know, quite a bit at the very start. We have a whole lot more coming down the road, and not just tanks, but also some of the uh, personnel carriers, uh, different types of AAA. Uh, whether it's 88s or 20 millimeters on the Axie side or the Beauforts on the uh, Commonwealth side. And there's some ships we're going to be doing as well. So we really want to round out uh, many different types of air or ground and even a few of the uh, naval assets that would be common at this location at this time period. Now, of course, the, uh, the elephant in the room has been this uh, controversy about the assets pack as a separate uh, module. And this definitely will be sold as a module uh, by itself, but also, again, will be offered as a bundle. In particular, you can buy the bundle as a pre-purchase uh, for a cost actually less than even the Nevada map. And you know, I think the key to remember here, too, is that uh, DC World itself is free and the only way that revenue is generated for DCS World is through the module slash uh, DLC. And as we have more and more uh, third parties developing content for DCS World, um, whether it be aircraft, uh, ground unit packs, campaigns, um, maps, and so on, uh, there needs to be a valid way for them to actually make it profitable and continue doing this and not only for third parties but also for Eagle Dynamics as well. Um, there has to be a revenue chain to fund developing the product. Um, we've certainly looked at other ways to um, you know, address this you know, such as uh, even doing low detail objects that anyone can see in multiplayer but um, it's not a really good idea, both from a business standpoint, particularly from a customer satisfaction standpoint of some new coming into DCS world. So while we understand it's not a great option for some, um, we definitely believe it's the best option available, at least right now. And it will continue to be so 
um, for the foreseeable future. So let's get back to the uh, Q&A portion. And the next question we had was whether or not the Normandy map will have uh, German voiceover. And this really isn't a question of the map, but it's actually more of a question of the aircraft module or even the campaign for that matter. Uh, again, it's really not something that is part of the map itself. Now, the uh, next question is a very popular one regarding the uh, release of the Normandy map in Steam. Now, it kind of goes back to what I was talking about before of uh, the unified version, what we're calling just like 2.5 for now. And with Steam, we can only actually have uh, one depot and one open beta version of that depot at a time. And right now that version is 1.5 with a 1.5 open beta. So we really don't have an option to do a 2.0 version on uh, Steam right now. Now, of course, once we move to the unified version, um, that version on Steam will be essentially 2.5 in the unified uh, version in which we can have all the maps, all the campaigns at once. But until that happens, um, at least uh, for now, um, the Normandy map and the Nevada map will solely be possible on the eShop version of DCS World. Now the next question touches on what I was referring to earlier um, regarding the uh, assets pack and the question was about having to continually purchase uh, ground objects and AI units as they come out. And uh, for the most part, no, we're really not planning on doing what's like this term micro transactions. The only time we'd be doing uh, separate module packs like this would be projects that have devoted you know, a really large manpower investment of cost and time that there needs to be um, you know, some kind of recoup on you know, the huge investments for projects like that. So again, I really don't foresee any situation where we're going to be charging per vehicle or per missile or you know, anything like that. And the, uh, the last question on my list was regarding uh, actually an effect of like uh, black puffs for 88 flag and things of that sort. And it's certainly planned and will you know, further be improved down the road as we improve the explosion effects. And with that, uh, that wraps up the questions I had on my list for today. And you know, I realized there's some questions I wasn't able to answer, uh, mainly because they're either you know, very much subject to change or I just simply you know, don't know the answer at this point and could probably be better answered by the development team, hopefully in a later uh, live stream. So I hope you enjoyed this live stream and I will see you next time. Thanks.